Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. Manfred Weber, the chairman of the European People's Party, said that only his faction can replace law and justice in Poland and lead the country back to Europe. His words were met with outrage from government politicians who called it an attempt to interfere in the elections, which will be held in the autumn. German politician Manfred Weber is the head of the European People's Party, which includes parties such as the Civic Platform and PSL. We advocate a course that excludes radicals. The AFD, Le Pen, are our political enemies. I have formulated three conditions for any cooperation, pro-European, pro-Ukrainian, rule of law. In this way, we are building a firewall against the Law and Justice Party. We are the only force that can replace law and justice in Poland and lead the country back to Europe. According to government spokesman Piotr Muller, the German politician literally admitted that his party is putting pressure on Poland through European Union institutions. The European People's Party is trying to influence the electoral outcome in Poland. It is necessary to speak about it directly. And in fact, it is enough to quote Weber's words. In an interview with the Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung newspaper, Manfred Weber said that law and justice is not following the democratic path, for example, by wanting to create a commission to investigate Russian influence. Its work could cover the years in office of Prime Minister Donald Tusk, a party colleague of Manfred Weber. It unquestionably must be recognized that the Law and Justice Party devastates the rule of law, democracy, and the European Commission has repeatedly said so. On the 31st of May 2022, Donald Tusk bid farewell to his position as president of the European People's Party. His place was taken by German Manfred Weber. European Commission head Ursula von der Leyen, who is also a member of the faction, wished Donald Tusk an election victory in Poland. Dear Donald, you embody our values. Now you are returning to your country to stand up for them. Where are the civic platform leaders? Why don't they demand an apology from Manfred Weber? This is such a very serious warning signal for people who voted for civic platform, because they got another argument to look at those politicians of the total opposition who are perfectly in line with Germany's expectations. The possible return of civic platform to power would mean the return of a Berlin-oriented foreign policy, said columnist Jacek Lizinievicz. In this respect, Weber is right. If they would overthrow the Law and Justice Party, then Germany would gain from it. In a way, we have now received an answer to the question of why EU institutions see rule of law deficiencies in Poland and block some EU funds, for example, under the National Reconstruction Plan. A weak Poland is a Poland that the European Union accepts, Poland as a country that is fighting for its rationale, fighting for its interests. This cannot be liked by the European Union. A similar situation occurred last September in Italy. Just before the country's elections, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen threatened that if a party opposing EU policies won the elections, Brussels would not hesitate to use the penalties used against Hungary and Poland, for example. The movement of Wagner Group troops to Belarus is a negative signal for Poland, President Andrzej Duda said earlier today, as he headed for talks with other NATO leaders in the Netherlands. The movement of Wagner troop groups to Belarus is a negative signal for Poland, President Andrzej Duda said earlier today, as he headed for talks with other NATO leaders in the Netherlands. The relocation of de facto Russian forces, probably in the form of the Wagner group to Belarus, as well as the move of the head of the Wagner group there, are all very negative signals for us, which we certainly want to raise strongly with our allies, as well as enforcing the resolutions of the Madrid summit, and to speed up the reaction from NATO, to make NATO's defensive plans more efficient, to enable the quicker relocation of soldiers, increase the strength of the battalion groups that are stationed in our region of Europe, and increase military resources in this region. These are all the goals we wish to achieve. Wagner boss, Yevgeny Prigozhin, arrived in Belarus on Tuesday under a deal negotiated by Russian President Alexander Lukashenko that ended the mercenaries' mutiny in Russia on Saturday. Russian President Vladimir Putin said Wagner's fighters would be offered the choice of relocating there as well. United States President Joe Biden said yesterday that the brief uprising by Russian mercenaries against the Kremlin is part of a struggle within the Russian system in which the United States and its allies were not involved. Meanwhile, earlier today, Belarusian leader Alexander Lukashenko explained his motivation for taking part in talks to end the mutiny in Russia. At a White House event, Biden addressed the dramatic power struggle that erupted over the weekend when the mutineers raced towards Moscow 
only to stop before reaching the capital. The, uh, the situation began to develop as it did. I directed my national security team to monitor closely and report to me hour by hour. I instructed them to prepare for a range of scenarios. I also convened our key allies on a, on a Zoom call to make sure we we're all on the same page. It's critical that we're in a coordinated in our response and coordinated in what we're to anticipate. We agree, they agreed with me that we had to make sure we gave Putin no excuse. Let me emphasize, we gave Putin no excuse to blame this on the West or to blame this on NATO. We made clear that we were not involved. We had nothing to do with it. This was part of a struggle within the Russian system. Biden said he and his team would continue assessing the fallout from the incident. Today, Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko explained why he was involved in talks with Wagner Group chief Yevgeny Prigozhin. Putin and I are guilty of not acting in due time, so none of us think of ourselves as heroes. Yes, we stopped a bad development, possibly a monstrously bad development. We are allies. We cannot sit on the fence. If Russia falls, we will be buried under the wreckage. If somebody does not understand it, give it a thought. Dig into history. It's the center of our civilization. Yes. According to Lukashenko, it was he who managed to talk to the trying to enter Moscow, we're warning we're him we're his we're units we're would be squashed like a bug. He says, I'm not asking for a lot. Let them hand me over Shoigu and Gerasimov. I also need to meet Putin. I say, Yevgeny, no one will ever hand over Shoigu, Gerasimov or anyone else for that matter. Especially in this situation. You know Putin as well as I do. He says, but we want justice. They want to strangle us. We will march on Moscow. Say, Halfway to Moscow they will squash you like a bug. Even though, as Putin told me, the troops were busy on the southern front line. Russian intelligence services are investigating whether Western spy agencies played a role in the aborted mutiny. The TASS news agency quoted Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov as saying on Monday. Ryanair expects passenger numbers in Central and Eastern Europe to surge by at least 50% over the next decade, the airline's manager for the region said, as the airline looks to dominate in this less developed market, also targeted by rival Wizz Air. Europe's biggest low-cost carrier has ordered 300 new Boeing jets as it seeks to take advantage of the rebound in air traffic following the COVID-19 pandemic. The company sees demand for new routes in Eastern Europe. We plan to grow in the whole region of Central uh, and Eastern Europe in upcoming years. Our recent Boeing uh, order, so we just ordered over uh, 300 planes, is going to support our growth. We plan to have over 300 million passengers in upcoming uh, decade per year. So Central Eastern Europe is important element of this growth. Uh, we want to focus very much on this region. We see that this is going to be a large part of our uh, upcoming expansion. While Poland has long been one of Ryanair's key markets, Wojciech Golembiowska said the company was now redoubling its focus on other countries in the region. She said the company was also aiming for a dominant position in countries like Romania, Bulgaria and Hungary. Hungarian budget airline Wizow will be its main competitor, as it offers similar cheap fares as well as connections to the Middle East. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather, Poland daily business and more programs. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.